Hi everyone and welcome to Conversations for Peace. This is day seven. So we are one week into a month long continuous conversation about peace for peace. I'm Marcy Newman, your Heart Shift Coach, and we've been talking about all of the different components of peace as well as how you can cultivate more of that energy within you. Tonight we're going to be talking about the mind principle and the quantum physics of your energy field and why it is so essential that you are conscientious about the thoughts, your beliefs, and of course the actions that you are taking. We've been talking about how it's so easy for us to actually go to war within ourselves. In fact, whenever we are out of alignment with our true self, our true nature, which is love itself, for lack of any better term, we essentially are at war. The energies that are outside of love are energies that are incomplete, so they're always searching out energy like themselves, but there is always an element of being unfulfilled. So today, as we start to look at the quantum physics that are associated with your energy field, what's important about this mind principle is that it acts like a mirror. So it is receiving information that's coming from your thoughts and it is extremely sensitive. It is as impressionable as a child. So whatever you're thinking about and giving most of your um, either focused attention or emotional response to has a huge impact on the vibrational frequency of your field. In fact, it actually calibrates on a regular basis based on all of the information that you are feeding it. Yes, there are lots of different energies that are coming in from the outside, but you are so powerful that at any given moment, you choose which energies to put your focused attention on. So because your energy field and this mind principle, as it is explained to us, is so impressionable, like I said, like a child. What that means is that in that sensitivity, it can also trigger emotions that are associated with fear. Now, fear can be good in some ways, right? It, it gives us an indication as to when to shift and get out of a certain pattern or a way of, out of the way of an oncoming train. There are lots of good things about fear. However, when fear becomes the predominant energy of your field, the parts of you that are true and natural associated with love have difficulty getting through the density of the energy of your field. So let's take a look at how this works and the impact of, of this information. Fear causes contraction of your energy field when it becomes the predominant factor. As you know, whenever you are extremely fearful, you can become paralyzed, even catatonic, unable to move, frozen in place. And what is necessary in order to bring about thaw, right, or bring about movement, action, is that the energy of light needs to be injected. What's happening around us in the world, as we know, has created a tremendous amount of fearful responses in people. Some of it legitimate, some not. 
The problem is, is that everything has become so compounded and we are bombarded from so many different directions. If we are out of touch with our true nature, as I spoke about last night, it becomes more and more difficult to discern what is for our highest good, to discern whether the messages are coming from this place of intense fear that is telling us to run in an opposite direction or coming from our higher self, which is always giving us the guidance to follow it, to just follow. It always has your best interest in mind. So when we are overwhelmed or overwrought with information that creates so much fear, I'm inviting you to remember that this mind principle exists because just as the impressions can bring about fear and create more fear and your field becomes a field of fear, you can reprogram it. Reprogramming is just as easy in the direction of high vibrational frequency experience as it is with fear. The issue in more cases than not is that the voice of fear is very loud and you're very programmed to respond immediately and to respond with more fear. But what would happen if you started to use this principle knowing that your field is impressionable that there is a principle, a mind principle, that tells you that there is a mirrored effect by what you're thinking, believing, and the actions that you're taking. What it suggests is that if you change the image that you are experiencing, choosing to re-imprint with images that are happy, joyful, healthy, bringing you to this place of reclaiming your safety, reclaiming your sovereignty, reclaiming your own personal power. What happens is the more that you exercise this ability, the stronger it becomes. It's just like any other muscle. Exercise it and it will be there for you. It will work for you in the way that you need it to. So let's just talk about how you might start to shift these images. Number one, we spoke a few days ago about reducing your intake of images, of information that is creating more fear within you. I shared with you that I haven't read a newspaper in close to 20 years. I don't watch the news, and yet the information that I need that's necessary for me always comes to me. Now, one of the things that I do, and I shared this also, is that I use different images in order to shift my energy. So right now, we are looking to create more energy that will bring us back into a place of peace because it's only from a peaceful place that you will have access to all of the parts of you that will help you to create a sense of harmony, a sense of, of goodness, personally empowered once again, to be able to make choices that are for your, your highest good. And those are the people all around you. One of the most important things to remember about this mind principle is that when you start to replace images, 
the image that was once there essentially is no longer there. In fact, it no longer has an impact or power over you unless you again turn your focus, turn your attention to it and start to feed it energy. But this principle allows you to start to make new conditions, new images, create new experiences for you. So here's a very quick way. I call this an exchange program. In fact, it's the basis of the heart shifting process that I've created. We start to really embrace what experiences, what images, what thoughts, what beliefs, what people, what circumstances support us, bring us to a place where we're feeling good about ourselves, where we can once again connect with our possibilities, potential to create a different life. So here's something to remember. As people are dying, people are being born. As people are suffering, people are celebrating. Where there's poverty, there is abundance and prosperity. Where there is discord, there is alignment and there is peace. Where there is fear, there is a sense of strength, power, connectedness, and people who are experiencing it as powerfully as those who are experiencing the fear even more so. And the beauty is once you start to seek out those areas that can provide different imagery for your mind and you start to focus and feed that energy, very soon that becomes the predominant energy in your energy field. And then what happens is you will step into this higher vibrational frequency where new life is waiting for you. And it is a life where you start to recognize that in every situation, there is good waiting for you. It's waiting for you to explore and to discover it. Good is waiting for you and you can cultivate that good by setting your intention to come from a place of love, to come from a place where you are extending kindness, compassion, where you are extending all of the possibilities of a heart that's open generosity, connectedness. These are all your birthright. And this is what we are doing here today. We are having conversations about peace because peace is a complete energy that holds all of your potential as a divine being, a being of light, and a powerful creator. And this is a powerful step for you to move in that direction. And so, as I have every other day, I am going to share with you my peace pledge. And as I do, I want you to know that it's coming from my heart to yours. 
you can access this pledge for yourself as well as a guide that I've created, Seven Ways to Cultivate Peace in Your Own Life. Go to my website, heartshiftcoach.com, and it's right there. You have full access to it. And of course, it is at no cost to you, except perhaps to let go. Let go of your fears that are keeping you paralyzed or catatonic from moving forward with your life and remembering who you really are. Small price to pay for peace. So here's my pledge to you. I pledge to extend peace into my entire circle of influence through cultivating my own peaceful heart, through clear intentions, clarifying them every day, taking personal responsibility for my thoughts, my feelings, my beliefs, my actions, and pointing myself in the direction of taking only compassionate action I take the peace pledge and I am passing it from my heart, through my heart, to yours. This is a powerful pledge and I hope that you'll join me and take it with me too. Imagine the energy of peace that we can create together heart to heart. And so, peace in, peace out. Peace in, peace out. Until tomorrow, may your every conversation be a conversation of peace. Bye-bye.